seven. Yes. How did you get here? I drove here. How did you get here? <laughs> same, same. We, yeah. yeah wow, it's amazing. Here. We have so much we in might common have even already. We've driven on some of the same roads. That's that could be. Wow, I just feel like we know this each other trippy, so well. Man. This, yeah, we live the it's same a life. small world. It's, it's crazy. So before that, though, so we're kind of getting the backstories of the people who are in this bizarre, unconventional lifestyle. Yeah, How did it you? Is. Yeah, because you started conventional. How did you find your way from normal? Normal? To what, to well, I've never been normal. <laughs> so I've always been what I am now. But I guess you're probably asking how I came to be living in a step. In terms is of that, the lifestyle, exactly. Yeah. Going from a more conventional lifestyle to this. Sticks and bricks to step van living. Exactly. How, ah, how did that happen? Okay. Well, it was part of it involved purchasing a vehicle. That was <laughs> that was a key what? thing. Oh, no, wow, I didn't isn't actually. that amazing? <laughs> yeah, it happens to a lot of people in the lifestyle, you know, they purchase it unless they inherit, you know, get yes, lucky. Some people do. But uh, for me, the step van was utilitarian. So I'd been doing world travel since about 2010 mm -hmm. and just traveling South America, Europe, Asia, and just loving it. And every time I came back through the United States to try to visit family and friends, or I needed to be here, say for surgery, uh, one visit, um, one visit I came to sell my house, I didn't have a set of wheels. And then I was couch surfing, staying with friends. And sometimes like when I was selling my house, and buying rental properties, I needed to be here for five or six months. Mm -hmm. So extremely difficult to do that. And then I had a few belongings here in the United States that I wanted to hold on to. So purchasing a vehicle that could carry just a few of my personal things could also be utilitarian for uh, repairing and fixing up rental properties mm -hmm. and a place that didn't require rent or a mortgage so all of these things ended up being um, elements in leading towards van life. Now specifically me choosing a step van over say a Chevy cargo van or something like that. I'm 77 inches tall, you know, just, well 77.7 .7 actually. Naturally. So just short of six foot six. Mm -hmm. And so um, all of the vehicles that I went in, class C RVs, mm. class A's, um, except for just a few Sprinter vans, Pro Masters, all of those were about six foot four for the ceiling. And I have enough ridges already in my head that I usually <laughs> wear a hat, which is around here somewhere. And so I decided I needed to have a vehicle that had a high enough ceiling. And a good friend of mine, Giuseppe Spadafora, pointed out step vans as a solution with a high ceiling, square walls all made of aluminum so you don't have to worry about mm -hmm. rust it's mm -hmm. lightweight um, and you have the ultimate stealth factor in my opinion even better than a white Chevy van mm -hmm. in that if I go to any industrial park any business park from the outside if I park outside of any business I'm gonna look like a delivery vehicle and I can build an awesome tiny house on the inside mm -hmm. I have almost 130 square feet inside uh, paid about 7,000 for my rig mm -hmm. So uh, it's much more than a schoolie, but I get <laughs> ultimate stealth. Uh -huh. And again, I have aluminum space. and space and headroom. You can't yeah. get this in a school bus. Yeah. Plus having the 90 degrees is nice. You yeah. Know. Flat walls. Yes. Living in a square. Yeah. yeah. Living in a square. That's <laughs> so I, I imagine that's probably what you were after with your question before. Yes. That was excellent. Um, so it seems like for a lot of people, it's kind of like there's steps where people discover it. So like you mm. were couch surfing already and you were traveling already mm. and it was just like the natural progression right. of like, why would I do anything different right. than, than live in a step van? Well, it's funny because before I started traveling internationally, I was looking at getting a toy hauler trailer mm -hmm. and actually being in the trailer. But um, I decided that I couldn't afford it I, out of pocket, just didn't have the money. So I was going to travel until I could save up enough money. And then I fell in love with traveling. Mm. And so the vehicle ended up not being my tri primary residence, but just a utilitarian residence between continents. So mm. summer in Europe, come back, step van two, three months, look for a good deal, fly to Asia for the winter, um, then fly back in the step van again for a few months before going somewhere for the summer. But you're full-time now in this. 
actually when you're not abroad when i'm not abroad yeah exactly. this is my home when i'm here in the u.s right. but it's really intended to be half and half roughly you know maybe six months out of the year i'll be in the step van and then traveling mm -hmm. the rest of the time that's my intention but i sort of got stuck here last year building most of the year and only made one trip out to europe last year you said one of your subscribers was house sitting for you. Yes. So do they live in here when they're doing that, or just kind of? I don't know. I gave him the keys. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't ask, and I didn't look. So it's look. people who live in so other. So it's okay, quite possible. Cool. He I had know. a nice, beautiful house. So. Oh. You know. But even so. Yeah. Maybe feels good in here. It's possible. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what do your people think about? Um, My people. Yeah, your original the, people. The like, tall people. Yes. What do you, the tall people have to say about? No. The what tall is your? People all love it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they do. Um, what about your family of origin? What What are their thoughts on, um, on your I'm really. Well, my sister thinks it's pretty cool, pretty awesome. Um, so I guess she's the person that counts. Okay. Right on. Um, the majority of people that you encounter who are not in this lifestyle. Um, are they like, rock on, that's so amazing, or are they like, what's wrong with you, or... Maybe everybody's just being polite, because <laughs> nobody has really said that's really weird. Everybody seems to think it's pretty cool. Yes, I think it's pretty cool. What I get sometimes is just people who are like, well, I hope things start looking up for you. Mm. You know, like, the assumption that, like, you must be down on your luck or falling on hard times to uh -huh. be living this lifestyle rather than realizing it's... Uh -huh it's actually maybe they think this is a good fit for me and that you can do better maybe that's it <laughs> they're all this makes sense for yeah seven. exactly and then they look at me and they're all oh exactly no, exactly that's, that's what i think's going on that's my theory <laughs> i don't know but i'm gonna ponder on that <laughs> well cool what's your favorite part about living in a vehicle this uh the kitchen part is my favorite part the kitchen's your favorite part <laughs> <laughs> me too actually um no again it's utilitarian for me so um not paying a mortgage not paying rent and um, yeah that's that's we're really cheating the, big the system thing. aren't we well i feel like that society has a script yeah. written out for us that right. they want us to follow and if you're deviating from that maybe that's a form of cheating so well it's, it's, if you don't subscribe to the system in the first place you're not cheating the system it's just like a system that exists outside right. of what you're doing right, so right. yeah yeah um what part don't you like about it in comparison to living in sticks and bricks you know it's funny because i have a youtube channel why a oh, strange what? coincidence yes and oh. i um, worked on a video last week comparing sticks and bricks versus van life versus european backpacking by backpacking Whoa. it doesn't mean going up in the mountains yeah european backpacking is using your backpack and going to hostels and going right. like from paris to prague to budapest yeah. and stuff like that with your backpack and staying in hostels uh -huh. so comparing all of those in oh, the we house gotta watch that video yeah that's, a, yeah that's cool so a house has amazing modern convenience you have a shower that you can run and have hot water and get out and have your favorite fluffy uh, towel and sure. have six dogs uh -huh. and two cars mm -hmm. and a boat in your backyard and have a pool table downstairs and a big screen tv you know you can't do any of those things with fan life or backpacking mm -hmm. uh, but that comes with a price yes and all of those things become anchors because you've got to take care of the pool you've got to water your plants you have to feed your dogs all those things become anchors and you have to have enough income source working with a job to support your house and it's but you trap. get extreme comfort mm -hmm. extreme comfort yeah now if you want to go to a little bit more discomfort you can go to van life you, know, you may not have the headroom the the shower that you can run with endless water you may not have your pool table you may have to give those things up mm -hmm. unless you're going to put it on a trailer mm -hmm. and you know have a water tank you know, carry in your uh, swimming pool yeah, for your swimming pool, your hot tub, like uh, Louis has, you know, his hot tub on his uh, bu on his bus. Yeah. I've thought about getting a little blow-up kiddie pool just mm. for like, you know, when I want yeah. a hot tub. I heard about those people that have the hot tubs that you know inflate and they put the little heater unit out there and they. That's pretty sweet. Run a you just hose. have one out in the desert That's outside right. your rig. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, go on. And so then maybe it's possible. And then. So uh, you give up a lot of conveniences to go to van life, but sure. you also have a little bit more in the way of emotional stress in that. When you're in your home, you know exactly where to go get your favorite creamer. You know exactly where to go to get your favorite hamburger. Right. You know 
um, where your friend is your mechanic to yeah. do your repair. When you're on the road in your van and you break down, you're scrambling to try to find a mechanic who you trust. You may be wandering around to try to find uh, the coffee shop that has the Wi-Fi mm -hmm. with the fast speed that you need or you may not know where to get the fresh vegetables you want because you're vegetarian. Mm -hmm. So all those things become stresses at some level, maybe a low level stress. Well, you're, it's different stresses than you have right. living in a house because there's certainly stresses when you're locked into that system and you have to keep feeding the beast. Yeah. So, um, and then the European backpacking also has a certain level of stresses. Trade -off. So I'm of the theory that if you have some sort of combination of all of those, of the sticks and bricks huh. for a little period of time and it allows you to get recharged but you will miss the variety and the challenges and the personal growth that you can gain by european backpacking mm -hmm. you'll be limited with the anchor of the house that you might not have with van life but mm -hmm. van life could get possibly really stressful and tiring and emotionally wearing mm -hmm. if you do that for very long and so maybe a European trip or maybe staying with a friend in an apartment for a few months hmm. may be the key to allow you to get recharged. So um, I'm a Buddhist by nature. That's a middle way approach. It's mm -hmm. not being extreme hardcore in one direction. And that yeah. may, may not be what van lifers here want to hear, but that's more my philosophy. So it's about balance. Yes, having balance in yeah. your life and not being too extreme one direction. Oh yeah, I don't, I, I try not to vilify the uh, the other way, you know, the way that we came from. Um, mm. Some people find total fulfillment in that. And there's aspects of it that I totally love of living in a house, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I've spent a, uh, like a little bit of time in a townhouse recently and it's mm -hmm. depressing. Yeah. I get lazy. And, mm. you know, but I have but I can run my blend tech, mm -hmm. you know, to make smoothies with my frozen right. fruit in my freezer and I can take long showers. So, so. maybe it's good for a few weeks and exactly. then you're craving getting out so you can climb a mountain and go, you know, hiking out in the exactly. forest or something like that. So maybe some combination might work for you. Totally. Just for my own curiosity, when you are backpacking in Europe or wherever, mm -hmm. do you hitchhike much? I have done hitchhiking, but probably not as successful as you would be. <laughs> I'm I heard pretty a rumor, good. It was on Facebook, so I don't know if it's true that <laughs> females get picked up by hitchhiker or by drivers much more than uh, males. Well, there's a trade-off with that as well. Yeah. Because some of them you don't want to get picked up by. Oh. But I've well, had very I haven't good luck. really had that experience myself, so you know. Yes, no, you're say, a big man. Uh, so apparently, so yeah. You know, <laughs> I don't know. Very cool. Uh, well, thank you so much, Seven, for um, telling us a little bit of your story. You're welcome. Hey, yeah. where are you from originally? Um, well, I've been nomadic since childhood, since about age four or five. How's that? Uh, my father was a mining engineer, and so we started moving when I was four years old. Actually, I was born in Denver, Colorado. My parents huh. were living in Idaho Springs. Made 27 moves before I finished high school. Wow. Made 55 moves in the United States. And I've lived outside of the U.S. probably for eight or nine years now. And ah, yeah. over 50 countries. Yeah, you were totally just uh, groomed for this. Why would you do anything else? I don't know, maybe variety. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Very cool. Well, thanks for chatting with us, Simon. You're welcome. That's like a little two-minute spiel there. <laughs> Definitely. That was a little more than two minutes. Well, you can just do it a little fast forward, like, you know, 150% on the speed. Whenever of the video. I watch anything, my I voice do that. will be much higher then. <laughs> yeah, you'll sound like a chipmunk. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Seven. You're and I, I love what you've done with the place. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll catch up with you later. All right. <laughs>